All right, we're going to begin our new unit. Our, un our new unit is field forces. So, a field force is a force that acts over a distance. It's a force that acts without touching anything. So, contact forces are kind of what we've been dealing with so far. Tension is a contact force. Friction is a contact force. But field forces happen... Uh, and they work in such a way that the two objects involved in this force don't have to touch each other. There are five field forces that we know about. If we kind of zoom out and, and look at these, these are our... Oh, sorry. We use the analogy of the field uh, to describe this at-a-distance thing. And so we'll talk a little bit more about the field. Uh, before we get into that, our field forces come from our five fundamental forces. Every single force you can think of can be reduced to these five. So our fundamental forces, what we're going to do is look at the force, the name of the force, uh, the fundamental quantity involved in this force. We'll talk about what that means when we get to it. And then we're going to look at what the field is for this force. So, in general, when we look at a field, it's the force divided by the fundamental quantity. It's just how we, we look at the field, and that'll make more sense on our last slide. So, our first field force is the force of gravity, or the gravitational force. We've used this one a lot. With the force of gravity, we have two masses attracted to each other. Our fundamental quantity is mass, and if we want to calculate the field, it's the force of gravity divided by the mass. Now, we already know that that's the acceleration due to gravity. Um, so acceleration due to gravity is what we call the field. It just happens to have a name. So the common name for the gravitational field is acceleration. That's, that's what we call the gravitational field. That was very fast. I apologize for that. So... By fundamental quantity, I mean mass, I mean charge, and, and those are really the only two that we're going to talk about. But it doesn't, we can't get rid of mass. So, force of gravity is mass attracted to each other. Our second field force is the electric field, I'm sorry, the electric force. With the electric force, we have charge attracted to one another or repulsed by one another. And with charge, we have two different types, positive charge and negative charge. So, when we look at the field, it's going to be force divided by Q. Q is how we represent charge. Um, and then it's just the electric field. We don't have a creative name like acceleration for this one. So, we talk about the electric field by using the name electric field. These are the two that we're going to spend a lot of time on. These are the only two that we're really going to talk about this unit. The other three fundamental forces uh, are worth mentioning. They're worth knowing, but we don't have to have an in-depth knowledge of how they work. So, uh, the third one is the magnetic force. We're not really going to worry about what makes them up. Uh, the next one we have is the strong nuclear force. Now, just to, to know what the strong nuclear force is, this is the force that keeps protons and neutrons glued to each other inside of the nucleus. The strong nuclear force is strong because it has to beat the electric repulsive force between protons. Okay, That's what the strong nuclear force does. It keeps the nucleus of an atom intact. The last one we have is the weak nuclear force. The weak nuclear force... Apologies. The weak nuclear force keeps the particles that, that make up a proton or that make up a neutron together. So the strong nuclear force is really, really, really strong and it holds protons to protons inside the nucleus. The strong nuclear force keeps the nucleus together. The weak nuclear force keeps the proton itself together. It's not as strong as the nuclear force. Now, um, 
All of these are field forces. All of these are action at a distance forces. Uh, magnetic force is the one that we can play around with the most because it's easy to contain magnetic poles where it's not very easy to contain electric poles. Um, but this added distance thing gives it that kind of magical quantity uh, that like magnetism has because they're not actually touching. We can make things float, basically. But we're just going to talk about the force of gravity in the electric field. And the first thing we're going to talk about... Oh, I'm sorry. We will talk about these last three forces a lot more in AP Physics 2. Or AP Physics C next year when you jump into that. So, we're going to spend the next couple of days talking about the gravitational force and the gravitational field. So the gravitational force, gravity, what we call it, is the force of attraction because it's always attractive, between two masses. All mass is attracted to all other mass. Another word that we use for the gravitational force is weight. That's how we experience it right here on the surface of the Earth. Uh, but we're going to move away from that a little bit and call it the gravitational force. Gravity is a very small, very weak force. It takes a whole lot of mass to get any sort of appreciable gravitational force. And the example that we're going to do at the bottom kind of speaks to that a little bit, and so we'll revisit it at the bottom. So, our formula for the force of gravity is this big G times M1 times M2 over R squared. Let's talk about what each of those things are. But this is how the force works. Uh, and the, the forces that we're going to talk about that are field forces kind of look similar. This 1 over R squared thing describes how the field changes the further and further away you get. So G is the gravitational constant. It's just a number to adjust the size of the force. M1 and M2 are two separate masses, because again, this is the force of attraction between two masses. And R is the distance separating the centers of these two masses. The distance from the center of mass 1 to the center of mass 2. So, The math with this is really, really easy, I think. I just need you to understand how this force works. So as we go through it, there are going to be some good things for you to remember, some good numbers to know. Good to know numbers. The first one is G. The gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meters squared per kilogram squared. That's a very tiny number, and so the adjustment that we have to make after we multiply masses together is very small, and we got this experimentally, but you're going to need to know that number. G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Another good one to know is the mass of the Earth. The mass of the Earth is huge. It's 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The reason we have gravity that we can feel is because the Earth is huge. The reason I can't feel gravity from you all in class is because you are not huge. You don't have a lot of mass, so you don't have a lot of gravitational force. Uh, the next number that's good to know is the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6th meters. Um, that's about 6 million meters or 6,000 kilometers. It's a, it's a big planet. We'll need these as we go through examples in class. So, speaking of examples, let's do one right now. What is the force of gravity 
between two 100-kilogram people standing half a meter apart. So, this is two larger people, 100 kilograms, about one Mr. Baker, the two of me standing half a meter apart. There is a gravitational force. Let's calculate it. So, the force of gravity is gm1 m2 over r squared. All we have to do is plug stuff in. So, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newton meter squared per kilogram squared times 100 kilograms times 100 kilograms divided by 0.5 meters squared. Now, if you look at all the units here, you got meters squared on top, and you'll have meters squared on the bottom. You have one kilogram, one kilogram, kilogram squared, kilograms squared. So all we're left with is meters. At this point, you plug it into your calculator, and we end up with the force of gravity being 2.7 times 10 to the negative seventh newtons. That is a tiny, tiny, tiny force. If all the other forces in the room were gone and this force were acting on these two 100 kilogram people, this force would only be capable of moving them half of that? About the width of 300 atoms, more, more or less, in one second. That's not very far at all. This is a tiny tiny, tiny force that we can completely ignore. Now, to put this in your calculator, um, you have to hit a certain button that you guys don't like to use. So, just again to emphasize, that's really small. Now, the calculator part, in your calculator, I'm not really good at crossing my T's. So, you do the 6.67, but this time you're going to do second, and then it's a comma. That's above the 7 on your calculator. The reason that we do that is because it is the EE button. And then you do times, oh sorry, then you do negative 11, so it's all one number to your calculator, times 100, times 100, and you have to divide it by 0.5 squared. I need you to do the second comma thing every time we see a times 10 to the, and not second log, 10 to the x. That, that creates two different numbers in your calculator, and you only need it to, you need your calculator to treat it as one number. It's going to save you some headache as time goes on. So that's how you would put that in your calculator. All right. Now we're going to talk about the gravitational field. We'll go through some examples of force tomorrow. It's really a matter of calculating it and seeing what happens with that R squared thing. Gravitational field is the new and tricky thing. And again, we call the gravitational field uh, the acceleration due to gravity. So we use the fields for two primary reasons instead of the force. One of my reasons is fields tell us how space is changed because of one of the fundamental quantities. Okay. So the gravitational field tells me how space is changed because of mass. The electric field tells me how space is changed because of charges. And the second reason is that the value of the field at a given point is independent of what we put at that point. It's independent of the object at that point. What that means is every object at this point in space experiences the same field. That makes it generalizable. And now we're going to talk about specifically what that means for gravity. Specifically for gravity, that first one,
tells me that the gravitational field describes how a mass changes the space around that mass. This change in the gravitational field tells all other mass how to behave around that first mass. That's, that's what the field does. I've got, an ex, I've got, a, sorry, I've got a, a demonstration for you that's going to help that. The next thing that we have is that the value of the gravitational field, which we call g, the acceleration due to gravity, depends only on the mass creating the field and how far away we are from it. So every object at that point, at that location, will experience the same field. That's important. And we've kind of already talked about that. That's when we say the acceleration due to gravity is the same for all objects at a point. If I drop anything in the room, everything is going to experience the same acceleration due to gravity. Everything's going to experience the same gravitational field. That's our explanation of what's going on. So for the formula, again, we said field was force over mass. So it's going to be GMM over R squared divided by one of the masses. It gives me a gravitational field equal to GM over R squared. Or what we'll say is G, gravitational field, or acceleration due to gravity, equals gm over r squared. m, and this is important, m is the mass creating the field. That's the one causing the change. It's not the mass in the field, it's the mass creating the field. You're going to have to keep those straight. Let's do a quick example, and then we'll be done for today. How far from the center of the earth is the field, is the gravitational field equal to eight newtons per kilograms? And again, it's newtons per kilograms because it's force per mass. That's why we're going to divide them that way. So, G is GM over R squared. We need to solve for R. So let's multiply both sides by R squared. It gets rid of it on the right-hand side. And now, let's divide both sides by little g. So R squared is gm over g. Plug in our numbers, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. That's the mass of the Earth. We need that mass. Divided by... 8 newtons per kilogram. And we're going to square root the whole thing. Before we do that, let's look at the units. So, the newtons and the newtons cross out, all of the kilograms cross out, and I'm left with meters squared, which is good because we're square rooting. So put these in the calculator, square root it, and you get 706, sorry, 7.06 times 10 to the 6th meters. That's a lot of meters. Uh, that's about 690 meters above the Earth's surface. Really cool, just to think about. We'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow. The International Space Station is only 330 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So we'll talk about what this means a little bit more tomorrow. But this is how we use the field. 